Let's take a look at the ROG Ally. How's it going everyone? Welcome to Deck Ready. I am here at my old work. I used to work for Austin Evans and he invited me over to check out the ROG Ally. I have no idea where he is. I showed up and this building was completely empty except for Matt Ancini, the master of This Is, who's right over there. Uh but. Yeah, so uh, I got my hands here on this ROG Ally. I've played around with it a little bit so far, like 30 minutes total, I will say, and my impressions are pretty solid. As you can see right now, I'm downloading the one game that doesn't work on the Steam Deck as of now. My two that I would always go to are Dead by Daylight and Destiny 2. Dead by Daylight just randomly got an update, uh, probably coinciding with Meet Your Maker, that now makes it work on Steam Deck. I have put so many hours into Dead by Daylight. It is now one of my favorite online games I've been playing as Leon. I bought the skin with the jacket from Resident Evil 4 for him and I have nothing but great things to say. It runs at 60 FPS uh, medium. It runs at 60 FPS locked 800p medium settings and it looks phenomenal on the Steam Deck. So with that said the one game that the Steam Deck doesn't really play on Steam OS that I play is Destiny 2. Uh, that has coincided though with a season that I'm not really too excited about so I figured I'd download it here on the ROG Ally and we will take a look at the end of the video at the performance there. All right, and real quick before I jump into this, I could not have done this video without the help from my friend Matt over at This Is and my friend Austin over at Austin Evans and This Is. So huge shout out to them. They're really gonna put this thing through its paces. This is more of a first impressions video, but yeah, thanks guys, let's jump into it. All right, so let's start out with look and feel here. I mean, right now you can just see probably on the A-cam that these are pretty much exactly the same size. They even have the same like sloping shape here around where your hands hold the sides of the device. So yeah, they're basically like the exact same. The only big difference immediately I can see is that the ROG Ally has two back buttons, whereas the Steam Deck has four. The ROG Allies, I will say though, are a little bit more accessible feeling than the Steam Deck. They might actually get in the way a little bit, but uh, I haven't played on this thing enough to actually tell you if that's happening. That's just immediately what I noticed is that the back buttons were like in my fingers, whereas on the Steam Deck, you kind of have to reach for them. The other huge difference, obviously right away you can see, is that there's two big trackpads on the Steam Deck here on my right, and on the left, you don't have any trackpads. And when I open opened up Steam here on the ROG Ally. Thankfully, it goes right into the new big picture mode, which is just like their version of Steam OS. It's a little bit more finicky, but it's the same sort of layout and overall look and feel. Uh, I cannot find uh, the Xbox button that it says for menu here uh, on the ROG Ally, because if you see, you hit this button, it pulls up the command center, which is like kind of a revamped armory crate. If you hit this button, it does nothing. If you hit this button, it brings up the whole armory crate which is Asus is like proprietary uh, software that's kind of like Razer Synapse or the quick access menu in Steam OS. And then if you hit this button, it's just start. So yeah, there's no real Xbox button, but what I will say is that the touchscreen is super responsive, which as a day one product is great because if you guys remember, the Steam Deck's day one touchscreen responsiveness was not great and it actually took a few updates to even get the on-screen keyboard working and it was still causing people a few issues by the one year mark of the Steam Deck. So yeah, I gotta say, touchscreen on this thing, instant. Works amazing. This is Master Matt Ancini himself is telling me that he has had a lot of issues with the software uh, using this thing out of the box while it was updating, while it was downloading games. Uh, I only have a few minutes, like I said, of actual playtime on it, but from what I've seen, it's pretty solid. So maybe it just needed to kind of like settle as all Windows computers do these days. So this thing kind of has the same issue that the Steam Deck does, where if you leave it downloading a game uh, too long, it'll just go into sleep mode and stop downloading the game. When you plug in the Steam Deck, it'll just continue to download until the game is finished and then it'll allow the screen to turn off. It'll go out of that dimming mode. Uh, Matt was telling me that he left this thing downloading games like Cyberpunk 2077, Hades, and Forza Horizon 5 overnight and it did not complete those downloads which obviously is a little bit frustrating. It's just kind of a learning curve that you get with Windows versus Steam OS. Uh, I don't know how much more I like it. Like the offset sticks are cool but having the d-pad where it is on the Steam Deck I thought was going to be a little bit of an issue and honestly it never 
never really has been. Uh, having the offset sticks though with the left stick up in the top left, the right stick down the bottom right, that's obviously better orientation for a device like this that you get from not having the touch pads. But I will say, as someone who plays a lot of RTS style games, as you can see, my last played game was Marvel's Midnight Suns. And of course I've been playing Empire at War. I love having the track pads on here and for games like Zero Siever or Project Zomboid, having the track pads and those back buttons has come in clutch so many times. So while yes, they're not the most like responsive or you know the haptics aren't exactly the same between each touchpad, which isn't great, uh, they do work pretty dang well and I've used them enough now where I wouldn't want to give those up for this ROG Allies layout. But another thing about the ROG Ally that I think is definitely better are these face buttons. Not only are they bigger, they're just a little bit like punchier. They don't have a click to them or anything like that. They just feel a lot more like a full size controller versus the shrunk down sort of buttons you get here on the Steam Deck. Also having the B button kind of curve on the Steam Deck, you don't have that with ROG Ally. You've got the full face buttons there. Again, mainly because I'm guessing it doesn't have the touch pads here on the ROG Ally. But other than that, the biggest difference obviously is the screen. This thing's 16 by nine. This thing is 16 by 10. Uh, the 16 by 10 screen is 800p. This screen is 120 hertz and 1080p. The color reproduction is about the same. I'm sure you could get that matched up easily with uh, either Vibrant Deck or with SteamOS 3.5, which is getting a saturation slider for the Steam Deck, but it's just so much more crisp because A, it's 1080p versus 800p, and B, it's smaller. So when you pack down a 1080p screen, I feel like we're going back to those iPhone wars where one of those recent iPhones, do you remember which one had a 1080p screen and everyone was losing their mind over it? The iPhone uh, 10R or was that the 720p? <laughs> but then the big caveat there is that you're very rarely going to be playing games at 1080p on this thing, despite the fact that the processor in it is so much stronger than the one in the Steam Deck. And even though raw frame-wise, you're probably gonna get better numbers out of the ROG Ally than you are on the Steam Deck, I, for one, am someone who uses the frame limiter. I'm someone who uses V-Sync. So if I can get a game to run at 30 FPS, I'm gonna lock it at 30 FPS anyway, especially knowing that this thing probably won't have a great time running anything modern or AAA at 60 FPS, especially at 1080p. But one thing I did notice that I think is really cool is the ROG Allies version of the quick access menu. So if I hit this button again, it pulls it up instantly, which is great. This is so much better than other Windows handhelds. Like the Aya Neo is the one I had. I think it was like Aya Neo Pro or Aya Neo Next. That one stopped working after a month, but in the time that I had it, it didn't always work on the first button press. It didn't really come up quick when it did work. Switching the hertz of the screen always made it freak out and I would have to restart the game. It was very finicky. Everything about this so far has worked instantly when I hit it. Asus has different modes for the processor to run in. Obviously that's to save battery. So if you're downloading a game, you might want to keep it in silent mode so the fans aren't running because it is kind of like a white noise. It gives you the same sensory overload as the hood fan on an oven. I would say when you have the Steam Deck going full blast, I feel like this thing is not going to be any different. Performance mode is like the halfway in between. It's like going to get you decent performance. And then they've got turbo mode, which when I had uh, an ROG laptop, I always just left it in turbo mode. I let those fans scream. I don't really care. And another thing I just noticed is that the brightness remembered what I had it at uh, in the different modes. So turbo mode, I had the brightness a little bit lower for the C cam here, and it switched right back to that, which is cool. So you also can change the resolution of the screen, which is instant. It goes between 720p and 1080p, and you can change the refresh rate of the screen, which is also pretty fast. Like I have no issues with how quick that was. It goes between 60 hertz and 120. 120 obviously looks cool when you're doing things like scrolling through your Steam library, but for me personally, I'm just leaving it at 60 hertz all the time. I don't need 120 hertz out of this thing. And another cool thing is they have taken a lot of the most used and best features of the Steam Deck. You have an FPS limiter that goes 15, 30, 45, and then back to 60. That's cool. I will point out though that one of my most common use cases for the Steam Deck is going over here and switching it to 40 hertz, which it doesn't look like you can easily do in their version of the quick access menu. Also, another thing they have here, just like the Steam Deck, is AMD RSR. I forget the actual like 
full word of what RSR stands for, but it's like the new version of FSR. So your mileage is gonna vary with that just like it does with the Steam Deck's FSR. But yeah, so far my impressions are pretty good on this thing, but it's almost like relief that nothing is really standing out to me enough where I'm like, uh, maybe I'll put the Steam Deck down for a couple of months and pre-order one of these uh, ROG Allies and make that my main gaming device. Because I think another thing that really people are going to have to keep in mind with the ROG Ally is that it doesn't have the shader cache that the Steam Deck has. So if you're on the Steam Deck, every game you play basically, as people play it when it comes out, their shaders are uploaded to the cloud and it works really well with the Steam Deck because it's pulling from a bunch of Steam Decks which obviously have the exact same hardware spec, right? So as people play big new games, their shaders get uploaded and then you're able to download them and that eliminates stuttering. We saw this at the Steam Deck's launch with Elden Ring, which runs really well on the Steam Deck, doesn't have the stuttering issue, which is still present in the Windows version, you're not gonna be able to take advantage of that shader cache on this because it's running Windows 11, which means any game that stutters on your main gaming PC is gonna stutter on this most likely. And that's what really sucks because that's the biggest problem with PC gaming right now. It's been like this for a couple of years, but I feel like every game lately that comes out, except for Resident Evil 4 Remake and shockingly Dead Island 2, they all have shader compilation stutter, which makes it so that the first time any animation happens in a game, you're gonna see a one second stutter. Now, some people don't notice it or they're not as like sensitive to it or they just don't care. It's something for me that immediately pulls me out of the game and ruins it for me. So yeah, that's kind of like a non-starter on a Windows device for me. So until games get better, that's kind of like my big mental barrier on a Windows device. But I will say, with all that being said, I am a Steam Deck fanboy, right? Like I have a channel called Deck Ready. I'm kind of obsessed with Valve. I'm obsessed with Steam. I've been interested in everything they do behind the scenes with the Steam app and everything. Like since SteamOS 2.0 came out. So yeah, I'm kind of a fanboy. But if you're a Windows person, you don't mind stuttering. You don't mind the like intricacies and in learning how to operate everything in Windows, or you've been a PC gamer for a long time and Windows is like a second language to you. Uh, yeah, this thing is probably gonna do exactly what you want it to do. So on the Steam Deck you have in the quick access menu, you've got the performance overlay level. So if I start up Midnight Suns here, it's gonna load up and then you'll see across the top bar here, this uh, their performance overlay overlay over here on the ROG Ally, you can use it wherever you want. So yeah, it kind of obscures the screen and you can't really see it, but you can use it whenever you want. So if you're in Steam here over on the ROG Ally, you can see that the CPU is using about 13%. It's running at around 4,000 megahertz. You've got the GPU uh, running at 800 megahertz. It tells you the FPS that the console is running at. It tells you the temperature. It gives you everything you would want to know. Uh, that's good enough in my opinion. I like the frame time graph that you get here on the Steam Deck though. I'm just interested in frame times and getting it as smooth as possible. I don't know how advanced you can get here on the ROG Ally, but again, it is good that a lot of the parity is there between these two devices because a lot of people who have Steam Decks are probably going to want to check this thing out and they'll be comparing them apples to apples. And I think that's a fair comparison, but this thing's probably going to come out on top. And as someone who's used the Aya Neo Next, as someone who's used the Aya Neo Air, is what I want to call it. And then of course, I also have a One X Player Mini. This thing is smoother than all of those. So maybe this thing isn't as smooth as like my gaming PC at home, but comparing it to all the other Windows handhelds I've used, it is so much smoother, just like immediately, which is cool. I would really love to know though if One X Player had at least some hand in making this thing though, because it is a very similar not only shape, but the button layouts on either side of the screen are identical and the actual buttons are the same shapes. They're that little trapezoid look as the One X Player Mini. And honestly, it feels like holding a One X Player in my hand when I pick it up. So maybe this is some sort of partnership between Asus and One X Player. I haven't seen anything on that. I would just personally love to know. But but another thing, really the last thing about the hardware I'm gonna point out is that if you look at this thing from the top down, it's about as thin as the Steam Deck. Steam Deck might be, Steam Deck's definitely a little bit thinner for sure, but one of the biggest issues with every other Windows handheld I've tried is that they look really good from this top down C angle, right? They look, they look awesome, they look like a Switch or a Steam Deck, but then you turn them vertical and they're really, really thick. And that gets really annoying after a while, but this doesn't have that problem and 
comparing them on my hands, the Steam Rack actually feels a little bit heavier than the ROG Ally, which is kind of shocking considering this thing is a better chip and uh, you would think it would need more cooling or something like that. But yeah, ROG Ally, as a Steam Deck fanboy, my first impressions are I'm pretty impressed with it and my friends over at This Is and the Austin Evans channel are gonna really put this thing through its paces with stuff like GTA 5, Cyberpunk 2077, Hades, you know, all the other games that people like to test on these things. But I got you covered with the live service game Destiny 2.